All right, welcome to the Mad Rock headquarters. Today I'm just gonna go over a bunch of techniques for climbing hard on the board. For all the climbs I do, there'll be a playlist in the description so you can climb on the same ones that I am if you go onto the Tension app. Overall, this board is super versatile. I'm doing a pretty simple, just four by four session today. Uh, this morning, I actually climbed at Long Beach Rising, so you can check out that video if I've posted it already. So for my four by fours, I'm gonna try and pick climbs that are kind of different styles. And then right after this session, I'm teaching a clinic all around maximizing efficiency and power and basically climbing to your full potential on the board. So, but that's a two hour clinic, so we'll have a lot more time to dive into the nuances of climbing hard on boards. Overall, I spend a ton of time board climbing, whether that's a tension board or like a spray wall. There's a ton of tips that translate from comp style movements to board climbing. So things like space, time, position, these different frameworks that my coach Al at class five has really developed and pioneered new ways of thinking about climbing movement and new vocabulary for like understanding these really important fundamentals of how to move as efficiently as possible. Basically, I'll try and share some of that stuff in this video, but it's been really fun to translate those tips and tricks from World Cups and really dynamic, huge, compy sequences to a board climbing move that on the surface may seem pretty simple, like you're just pulling from two crimps to another hold or whatever. This board, there's a lot more than just crimps. There's amazing pinches and slopers and all that good stuff. But there's actually a ton of nuance in how you generate and how you weight your feet and hands and how you arrive in the end positions, trying to arrive in those positions without any excess momentum and being really deliberate with what position is actually the best on the board. It's not just a two-dimensional board, you know? You can really move three-dimensionally and for every move, there's gonna be like an arc that's the most efficient way to generate, create space from the wall so you can pull into the wall and then land in that end position and kind of catch and absorb your energy uh, in an efficient way so you're not loading your hands or feet more than you need to be. So I'll try and point out a couple of those little things in this session. Let's get into it. Okay, we're starting off on just a couple easy warm-ups. Even on this 8x12, there's so much variety. So we're starting off just on some classics in the four to six range. My goal is just to move really snappy and efficiently. I mentioned space-time position earlier. That's gonna be the biggest thing I'm teaching in the clinic, just in a lot more detail. But basically, before any move, you wanna make space both away from the wall and away from the end position that you're trying to move towards so you can pull and snap up into that end position. Another big thing, and I promise I'll stop talking as we get into the more of the actual climbing, but I feel like there's always like so much to talk about that I like forget I need to actually climb as well. Another thing I like to practice while I'm warming up is just connecting moves together. So just like in a comp where there's like dynamic moves and like paddle sequences, a lot of the time, even on the board, you can connect and use your momentum for you rather than against you and kind of connect positions. So I'll practice visualizing and reading these different positions and seeing if I can like carry um, through a couple moves, both because it's sometimes physically easier, but also like really gets your mental game warmed up and your whole body connected and flowing like it should. those last climbs I did at 20 instead of 30. I was feeling really good on them. I was like, damn, these V3s have never felt easier. Okay, we're jumping into some V7s now. This is at 40 degrees. Each move, right, there's an end position. That's gonna be the easiest like physical position to actually hold those holds. But between those positions, I'm really trying to generate smoothly. And like I said, like make space from the wall so I can pull in make time like over my feet. There's a moment of weightlessness that you create 
when you make space in the wall and then pull up and that's like when you want to snatch and like secure yourself in that end position. But it takes being really deliberate about like what the position is, really looking at the direction of the hold so you can pull perpendicular to the face of those holds and kind of lock yourself in and create tension, hence the tension board. But you don't want to be climbing with that tension all the time. You only really want to use that tension when you're initially like grabbing and like securing that position and then you want to lose all that tension most of the time to generate more efficiently. There's some climbs where the holds are just so bad that you need to like stay static, but even on those moves, you'll see really good climbers like use little movements like this to generate more efficiently. is you can filter between wood holds or plastic holds or even like playlists that are catered towards moonboard-esque movement versus kilter board-esque movement versus compy moves or whatever like that. So maybe in another video, I can put together a playlist of like my favorite dynamic style climbs and then some of my favorite like slopey climbs or like pure crimp strength climbs. So comment below if you'd be psyched on something like that. Playing around with the app is pretty cool. There's like an insane amount of features. All right, one more warm up block and then we're getting into the four by four. Another really good tip to try and practice on a board like this and really all climbing in general, but I find this is especially applicable for board climbing is using the swing from a uh, move to lead into the next. So you'll see like that move I just did. As I held the swing for this move, I came back this way and then I naturally had the space that I was talking about earlier and I used that momentum to go to the finish, to go to the finish, wow. So sometimes you don't even need to slow down all the way and use all that tension and all that energy to like fully stop. You can just carry your momentum between moves. So it doesn't always have to be like a bop, bop, bop paddle. It can be really subtle where you're just using that swing to your advantage and basically maximizing the strength that you already have. Like if you can pull, call it like 10 units of straight power, you're gonna amplify that 10 units a ton by using your generation and like swinging into it. Just like for a drag race, right? That's like the difference between starting at a standstill versus like going into it at like 10 miles an hour and then blasting off. So I kind of like to think about movement a lot like that, where you're always trying to gain little advantages. Okay, we're getting into the four by four. I'm just gonna go through and try four climbs like back to back uh, in between V8 and V10. Like I said, did a full session at Long Beach this morning and trying to conserve the skin, but still get a good pump. So we're not going crazy hard today. The little tips that I've been mentioning really compound and like make a big difference when you're doing something like four by fours, or if you think about sport climbing, like if you can save just five, 10%, even 2%, whatever, with each move, that's 50, 60 moves by the end of the route. And that is like a huge, huge difference. So practicing that while you're board climbing or climbing in general is so, so important.
took that last four by four. Overall, just taking the time to be really deliberate about the positions that you're generating for and then using momentum for you and kind of trying to generate smoothly so you can pull through transitional moments or periods on the wall is really, really important. Another big tip is just pulling with the direction of the holds. Essentially, the, the rule of thumb there is you always wanna be pulling perpendicularly to the face of a hold, right? If you're hanging on a jug, it's gonna be best like right below it rather than pulling on the side or this crimp, you wanna be pulling against the face this way rather than like straight out or like straight down. Another thing is just like taking a deep breath and like getting focused before each attempt so you can really learn and maximize all of those movements. Okay, we're pivoting slightly from my failed 4x4 attempt earlier. I uh, completed one round and then ran out of time before the clinic, but now we're just having a fun little community board climbing night. So I'm gonna try some Matt Volt classics that he put up on this board and see how those go, and then potentially get into some more mellow power endurance because I don't want to hog the board completely. is two slightly harder climbs. Not like back to back, but like trying to keep up a slightly good pace. Again, I'll just list a playlist with all these in the description, but feeling a little, a little tired after a full value day, but it's when it really counts and it's important to like try and move efficiently and like implement all the tips I talked about earlier, even while tired. Yeah, Kylie, come on. Sick. Come on. Yo, what? That is cool. Oh. Oh. Nice. That last 10 was from Matt. Foltz was like very fingery, but you still have to like generate really well. And honestly, watching Kylie on the second move, she did a better job of like making space and then swinging and using her momentum to get up to that next crimp. So yeah, pretty impressive flash go. just informed that Matt Fultz is a plus seven. That makes a lot of sense for this move. That first move is like absolute max fan for me, which I don't think I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely 
exhausted, but uh, this is just a nice looking V9. Haven't grabbed these pinches at the top yet, so it's crazy. Like this is my fifth session on this board, and there's still holds that like I've never touched before. The next session I do on a tension board, I'm psyched to make up my own climbs and play around with like some lower angle, like compy ones, as well as just some massive pinch climbs. So stay tuned for that video. I'll see if we can end on ascend. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And big shout out to Mad Rock for the amazing space. Andrew, let's go. Shout out to the largest wall of hangboards in this in the Western Hemisphere. And yeah, that's a wrap.